What the dog doing? G'day and welcome to the Homebrew Network. Today we're going to brew the Rat and Hunt. Easily the best traditional Pilsner in Australia and probably the world. What the dog doing? First up, I just want to say a big thank you to Hop Nation, of course, and all the crew there, and especially Tim, he's one of the brewers that shared the recipe with me. Cheers. Malt, hop flavor, a tiny little bit of sweetness, mouthfeel, everything you want in a Pilsner. And I'm really happy with how mine turned out. So I just want to say, because I know a lot of people don't get to the end of these recipe videos, this is the kind of recipe where you can't take shortcuts. On a good Pilsner, you can't be shortening the boil to 30 minutes or the mash to 30 minutes or things like that. You will not get the same beer. You just won't. This is a busy recipe. It's a four step mash. There is a decoction. Skipping the decoction and putting in some melodian malt is not gonna fix it. It's, it's, it's not the answer, I promise you. If you wanna brew an excellent traditional Pilsner, you gotta do the right things. Don't shorten the boil. You can't shorten the boil. <laughs> I'll tell you now, this, when I was there, when I was talking about it, they used to do a 90 minute boil for this and they extended it to 105 minutes because it's that important. They used a local Bluestone Pilsen yeast. Now I can't say too much good things about this. It's just such a good yeast for this style of beer. You, look, you could use other yeasts. So just try and get the best you can and really look after it. Anyway, I'll stop talking about it now because we're going to go over it in the recipe and I'll see you at the end. Cheers. So we'll get straight to the point. It's a four step mash. Four step mashes aren't for the faint hearted, especially in these 35 litre systems that have a thin and tall mash pipe. There are several ways to approach it and you might have seen me do it in other videos where you start with the sort of driest mash you can get away with and each step you can add some boiling water to try and help the unit along and get to the next step. If you do have the option of a wider vessel like a 65 litre or uh, say a G40 grain father, you're better off using that because the mash bed will be a little bit thinner and you'll get a lot more flow and you'll be able to change between those temperature steps much more easily. But as I said, if you have to go the hot water, adding hot water way, that's okay too. You can do a decoction for each step, which means you take some wort out and you boil it on your stove or on a side plate or something, and then you add it back to the mash to help those temperature changes. That is a lot of work, especially in a four step mash, and it will extend your brew day considerably. There is a decoction step in this brew, but it's only the last step up to mash out. But on this day, I decided to go for the full volume mash through the whole four steps. Whichever way you decide to do it, it's good to build up to four step mashes because they can be a struggle. So if you know you're going from mash to mash out very well, you might not have so many issues, but it's usually those early steps are the hardest from say 52 degrees to 61 degrees, where you're traveling that nearly 10 degrees in those low temperatures, they can be a real struggle. But believe me, it's worth it. Now I'm using Bohemian floor malted Pilsner malt, so some will say that the step mash is a good idea. I started with about 20 liters of water. In hindsight, I wish I had started with a little bit more, just so I had a little bit of excess work to play with. We're gonna start with a strike temp of around 55 and a half degrees Celsius for the first mash step of 52 degrees Celsius. I just let it settle in before I put the pump on for a few minutes. You can see we're down to 52 now is where we wanted to be. 10 minutes. All right, we've just clicked over from our rest to go into our first sort of mash step. And for 63 we're going to heat up. So now I'm going to help this. I'm going to turn the pump up and I'm going to uh, give it a bit of a stir as well just to help it along. The pump might work without the stir but it also might not. Now, I just want it to heat. I don't want to mess around. I don't want to be waiting 15 minutes. I want this step to happen quick. So I'm going to turn that pump up. Probably don't need it quite that full. And I'm just going to watch it. If it starts backing up, I'm going to give it a stir. I haven't really given it another stir yet, so it's not going to hurt. Still a long way to go on this mash. This will just help to get to that next step of the mash quicker. Then we move into the second step, which is 63 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes. 
and then 72 degrees for 10 minutes. And from that third step to the fourth step, we will do a decoction. I'm not going to lie, this was a very tough brew day in the Brewzilla 35 litre, as it will be in all vessels of the same size. You've just got to work it. You've got to keep that element on, keep that pump going, keep stirring, and that'll just help it get to temperature. It's all about the flow. Once you've got that flow going past your temperature probe and over your elements, it'll all sort itself out. This was also before the invention of the heat exchanger uh, dish or the diversion plate, as I called it. Uh, it's after this that I asked them to look into it, and that's when they came up with it. It's by no means impossible. I did it on this day. It's just a lot of work. So we can talk about the grain bill. And originally it was 9% wheat. So you're looking at the Wyoming wheat and the rest was Bohemian floor malted Pilsner malt. You can add acidulated malt, which I did in some versions, but often you'll find that doing the step mash can help with the acidity and the pH of the mash. That's why the first step's usually called the acid rest. Now we're moving on to the decoction mash, which was the step between 72 and uh, 78 into mash out. Because I wanted to do this relatively fast, and I didn't want to suck down on that, uh, that grain bed, cause a suction on the bottom of the grain bed. The dead space in these Gen 4s is very, very small. So I wanted to get this word out quick. So I decided to pull the basket up just halfway. And so a lot of the liquid would drain down the bottom and I'd, ha and I'd have less chance of running the bottom dry. I also turned the element off anyway, but I just wanted to just get rid of any chance I had of either scorching or, or, you know, running the bottom of the unit dry. So I just pulled the basket up a little bit and turned the elements off and pumped out some wort into my pot. I'm going to put this back into the wort, into the water slowly. I don't want to wreck everything. There's another oh, two litres. I've got about six to seven litres, I'm going to go and put it on the boil on the stove. So I boiled that seven litres of wort on the stove, until it was well and truly boiling. Gave it a bit of a boil and then went to add it back. There's many ways modern breweries do it. Some often have a steam jacketed kettle or mash tun and they pump some wort over and they use that steam jacket and you only really for decoction have to get to about 95 degrees i know there'll be some homeschooled home brewers there that will say no 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 you have to you know boil the grain at 100 degrees for it to work well i can assure you that you can get some very great flavors out of these other methods for the brewing process itself we we're able to introduce a couple of different methods which the decoction process allows us to introduce flavours and aromas that can only be introduced via that particular process. Um, when you're basically getting mould and heating it up to 95 degrees as you do in decoction, it um, creates my product, products, so kind of the intermediate products of caramelisation. Um, and that gives you a bit more body that you can't get from anything else apart from doing that particular process. Um, it just gives us a little bit more sweetness, um, a little bit more texture, a bit more mouthfeel. Uh, without making it too dark. Traditionally, you'd take about a third of the whole mash bed. You would use a sieve, so you got mostly malt, and you get a little bit of liquor with it too. And you take that out of the mash tun, you take it to the stove and boil that. That is a real lot of work. You, because it's so thick, it's like boiling porridge. And depending on the size of your mash, it can take a long time to get that up to the boil. And you've got to stir constantly. You stop stirring, it's going to boil. You can go back and see some of my old videos where I did it like that. This was a very long brew day. It was the first time I'd attempted a four-step mash in this unit. And so by the time I got to the mash out, I said, I'm just going to take some liquid out. That took me to mash out. So I waited 10 minutes. So I pulled the basket and sparged with about 14 litres. We're over a litre above what my um, volume was supposed to be, but that's okay, we've got a really long boil, 105 minutes. 
as I said at the start, this is a long boil. 105 minutes. Don't skimp out. And in this recipe, there is no boil hops. You heard right, there's no boil hops. It's all about flame out and a hot flame out. None of this dropping to 80 degrees rubbish. It is a hot whirlpool or this recipe won't work. Seven grams per litre hops is what you want. And we're gonna go halves and halves with Spolt Select and SARS. We're heading for about 40 IBUs. In my recipe, we had 76 grams of SARS and 76 grams of Spolt Select. They smell wonderful, so different. The Spolt Select and they just, they smell really good. Different, spicy, a really nice peppery flavour that one has there, that's the spolter. In the hot whirlpool for 20 minutes. Alright, 20 minutes of that. I then chilled it straight into the fermenter. I have no chilled this recipe before and it turned out quite well. Since this is liquid yeast, I'm going to give it a bit of a, I've got a sanitised whisk, give it a bit of a air rate. So I used the same yeast that Hop Nation used and that was the Pilsen by Bluestone. Bluestone are a great Australian yeast company. They are large packs of yeast with over 200 billion live cells inside. You might get away with an ale yeast without doing a starter with that, but I'd still recommend doing a starter with a lager yeast. I do a starter batch of beer. This was the first batch I brewed out of it. The second batch, or my true batch as I call it, I used the yeast cake from this brew and brewed it again. Lagers need plenty of fresh, healthy yeast. I asked Derek at ANHC what strain of yeast it was, and it is an Augustina strain. So when looking for substitutes, look for an Augustina strain lager yeast. This should be fermented about 9 or 10 degrees, and it shouldn't take long. If you've pitched a big batch of yeast, it shouldn't take long at all. Is it twice the amount of yeast? Like with all yeasts, I like to start raising the temperature about the 1020 to 1025 mark. You know, that depends when you're taking a reading, and I slowly bumped it up about a degree a day until it finished off. The ferment should only take a week, two weeks at the maximum, and then we do a slow cold crash. What I mean by slow cold crash is one degree a day till you get down to your one degree. There's a couple of reasons for the slow cold crash. One, if you're going to use that yeast again, you really want to look after it. Slow cold crash will do that. And some will say it helps to clean up those sulfur or lagery smells. You can get rotten eggs from the lager ferments. So all up in the fermenter, that is about three to four weeks. Then I would suggest transferring it to a keg where you want to lager it for another two months at least. Oddly for a commercial version in Australia, theirs is lagered for that long. It's about a three month process. So get brewing. So that's it and that's how I got to this beer. As I said before, don't take too many shortcuts or you're not going to get the same beer at all. A big thank you goes out to the Hop Nation crew, especially Tim who gave me the recipe. If you get down to the Footscray Hop Nation bar at the moment, they've got it on side pull. I know everyone's into the side pull taps lately. Well, you can go there and they'll pull it and you'll have a great beer. It tastes really good. I was there last Sunday and tried it. What the dog doing? You should too. Anyway, cheers, thank you. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, share. Thanks to my patrons, because without them these videos couldn't happen. Get into it, cheers. So get in there and support your local independent brewery. There's a little bit of a bonus at the end of this video, because I knew people would say, oh, I can brew just as good a beer under pressure or quicker or whatever. So I did another two batches faster. I used a little bit of um, extra malts for flavoring and both were nowhere near as good. You know, the same hopping method, but those two beers just didn't come close. Cheers. Oh, oh I messed up the end there. Too busy looking at the camera. Uh, there you go. This is the better of the two. It is crystal clear, the biofine one. It's got a bit of condensation on the glass at the moment. That's why it looks hay. It's crystal clear. 
and it's the better of the two uh, quick easy versions I made which means they weren't step mashed I didn't use floor uh, malted uh, barley you know a standard uh, Pilsner barley and I didn't go through a slow cold crash or any of that and I used some uh, cheap yeast dry yeast and the reason I'm not pouring one of the other ones, I could show you again, it's cleared up a bit now, but the one I didn't buy, I find, again, took ages um, to get clear and to even start tasting okay. This tastes okay, like I could see how some people would be happy about this, but this is no way a substitute uh, for the full ratty recipe, it, it just isn't, and I've tried several ways now. Um, and this is what, one of the reasons why this video has taken so long to come out because I knew people would say oh I do it fast and it tastes better or not better but uh, you know equal or clean clean's not what you want in a lager it's, it's just not and unless you're trying to do great northern or something that's got no taste um, the clean isn't the answer uh, it's good tasting beer and I don't know I think if you've tried the ratty and had it fresh you'll understand that and or you know you know, been overseas and, 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 and had the Pilsners at the source or what, whatever, you'll know that uh, there's the flavours there that you can't get by taking shortcuts. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you. I wasn't going to show them at all, and I thought I would. There's an, as I said, there's another keg of the second one there. I didn't use Biofine, and that's not even worth tasting because it doesn't taste anywhere near as good as that. Biofine's a really good thing and can shorten your, your lagering times. Um, and is okay under the uh, rising bolt, <laughs> a rising bolt <laughs> under the uh, priority laws. It's okay, it's drinkable, but it's nothing on the on the ratty. I just finished, but I just wanted to mention that the aroma is totally different and just isn't there. This is uh, was diamond, I think, and I just don't like diamond yeast. I know some people do, uh, and maybe it was just the wrong temperature for it or something, but. <laughs> Cheers. Please consider joining our Instagram page and Facebook group.